Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Riders and introduction to applied numerical computing course. In this very first video of the course, we want to talk a bit about the concepts of Jupyter Notebooks, which is actually the foundation upon which this course is built. So let's go for it. So the Jupyter Notebooks, I have already showed you how to install Jupyter locally in your system in a setup series. You can watch the video if you haven't yet. Uh, but uh, let me increase the font size a bit. But uh, for this one, instead of following this, uh, uh, this content, I want to show you uh, this in action. So uh let me show you the real uh, environment of Jupyter. So I have uh, already installed Conda Activate. We talked about this Conda environments, Python virtual environments and things. So uh, I don't want to spend more time on that. Uh, but you can uh, activate Jupyter by, call, by calling Jupyter command and then uh, notebook. So now it opens this, uh, it open it here. So I go to, for example, to the desktop folder. Uh, it open it in my home directory. But uh, I navigated to the desktop folder and then I can click uh, new and then Python 3. This is actually the kernel called the kernel of the notebook, which is actually the engine behind which runs the commands. But now I think it's a good time to talk a bit about what is Jupyter. Jupyter provides an interactive environment for running Python or lots of other other programming languages codes beside the, the description, the text that describes the code. So the users, the people who read this, or even the users who want to use it as a documentation tool can write about the codes beside the, beside the actual ones and at the same time, it also provides an environment to run them, to modify them. So it's actually a runtime environment. Users can interactively uh, uh, use it to, to manipulate the code and run it, and also at the same time learn from it. So with this introduction, you can see that it can have lots of different usages and applications. As an application, you can see, for example, here in this course, we have used it for education, for teaching something, but at the same time, it has applica certain applications in research or uh, other stuff. Let's go for it. Let's go to, to see what it, what, how it works. So in Jupyter, you have different cells. You can see here that it's, it, is, it is actually a cell. This is a code cell, I think. Yeah, a code cell, but at the same time, it can be marked down. So I, I converted it to markdown with a shortcut key Y also. Yeah, in y, with Y, it, it, it gets converted to, to, to code blocks. And with M, it goes for, for markdown. So I press enter. I can edit it. So you can see that I can say that, yeah, that, that I don't want to go for the markdown. So you can see that I say introduction. And when I press shift enter or control enter, it run a cell. I press shift enter. So it, it ran a cell and then created a new cell for me by default in code. So I, I create another one or I can go back and uh, you see that let's dive into Jupyter. You can see that I, I can run it again and it get converted to uh, to, 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 to a sort of, oh, I mean dive. It's a sort of, you know, markdown that is rendered by the browser in HTML text or, or you know, any, anything else like PDF or something. But then uh, here, because I have selected a Python tree as the kernel, I can run Python codes. So you can see that I can say A equals tree and then uh, A equals A plus four and then print A. And when I run it, when I press Control Enter or I press this run button here, you can see that it actually prints out the, it run the code and then 
prints out the, the output. So uh, you can see that it works. And then A is defined so I can even use it in, in the other cell. So I can say that B equals A multiplied by 2 and then print B. You can see that this is another cell and this is actually a computational cell or code cell, let's say. If I want to convert it to, I press escape, so to exit the edit mode, and then I press M, so this is markdown, and then I can say, mm, you know, for example, a subsection for equations. And then I can say, let's, let's plot something. You can see that uh, at the same time, I have codes and documentations together, and at any time, I can go back and modify something. And it also provides uh, an integration with graphics. So this is actually what I want to do right now. So I insert a new cell. You can say that insert is cell below. And then I can say yeah, import. I want to plot some uh, very simple things using NumPy. I, we will, you will see, you know, from, from in, in the next videos that how these libraries and these packages work in Python. But this is a very quick introduction, just you know, sort of spoil as an intro, as a part of the introduction to 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 Jupiter. So I say that import matplotlib pyplot. I think, yeah, as PLT, this is the way that people usually refer to that. So I say x equals mp in a space. I want to I, I wanna have a linearly spaced points from minus 6 to 6, 50 different points. Yeah, why not? And then y mp sine of x. You see that it had also some other complete features. And then I can say PLT plot x and y and run by pressing this button and then you will see that it's it generates the graphics so yeah this is actually how it works and then below the graphic i can have all again some uh, uh markdown that's really cool and then press enter so this is how it works you can see and then you can save it this is here untitled but i i can also change it to for example test and I rename it and you can see it here that this is actually the file ipymb with this extension with this file format. So this is how it works and then if there are some problem here you can immediately see the problem for example I say printf I, I run it and then said name printf is not defined. So this is how uh, it, uh, it shows you the errors uh, so it's actually a good tool for debugging as well debugging codes as well and you can also have some code behind files that you know this Jupyter document calls them. This is also yeah possible but yeah so this is uh, indeed the way that it works and in this document you can find a links uh, in the repo this is actually the, the zero session let's say you can see that it's more or less the same so it's the same demonstration the concept of kernel I told you and for the variables and things and also markdown markdown is you know sort of um as as the name implies a formatting a, a writing format it says or markdown language it's very easy to 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 learn but at the same time very efficient and powerful to write documentations with a simple commands you can easily learn them for example if you want to make something bold you see that uh, it with double strings it becomes bold, and with a single one it becomes italic. So this is actually how the language works, or this uh, this markdown language works. So yeah, there are a couple of you know small a limited set of commands that you need to learn tricks, let's say. And yeah, this is all we all the things that I wanted to tell you about Jupiter. You will see the actual. Uh, the real application of Jupiter when we start to talk about the materials in this numerical computing course. All the materials are provided uh, through by this um, Jupyter notebooks the things. So yeah, that was it. And uh, uh, try to if you want to go for this, try to install Jupiter locally and then. Uh, 
create some uh, sample notebooks for you for yourself and then just enjoy it so yeah that's it see you in next videos bye